I had this crazy idea to build a model railway bridge for a model railway out of erector sets, which were toy construction components. The bridge was going to be an eight foot span, which was a pretty large bridge for a toy erector set. Um, and this is the story of how I built that. The bridge itself is um, constructed of five different types of standard erector set pieces that I bought on eBay. And there's a interior aluminum piece that I got at Home Depot. And other than that, that's the entire construction kit. So I'm going to tell you how I did it. I begin most of my projects, like all my projects, by looking on Pinterest for examples in the past, bridges or erector set bridges, and there weren't that many, so I had to kind of come up with my own design. Here's my notebook. I'm going through with different ideas, and I kind of settled on something that had a little bit of an arch into it. Um, and I was beginning to get some ideas, and so I got the individual erector set pieces, laid them out on a table, and when I had a kind of design that I liked, I took a piece of paper and then I rubbed it. I did a rubbing across it, which showed in its scale what it might look like. And I put that up on a wall so I get a sense of what this bridge would look like at the full scale that I was going to build it at. Because these pieces that I was rubbing were at the full scale. So there's only five shapes. There's sharp curve, smooth curve, short medium and long pieces. That's the entire set, only these five. And out of this, you can build that. So I bought a bunch of old vintage record sets on eBay. I found a couple of places where there was a lot of them and I assembled the parts. And then um, the first piece I made was the plexiglass roadway and I'm um, here um, flame polishing the edge which is really the fastest way to make it clear and to tidy up the little edges it's mostly cosmetic it's not really structural but it sure makes it look nicer so here I am going to drill the holes in the aluminum piece that supports the road work and I made a little jig to help space the holes on the side at a regular basis. And I made it using a nail that I nipped off and inserted into the wood piece um, to form the index for the hole. And then I would drill a hole, um, clean it off, move it down to the nib on the jig and um, then the next hole would be um, spaced at the exact right distance and I could go down the entire length and get these holes drilled at the right spot in the metal, which would form a uniform pattern when I put in the support struts later on. And um, that worked out very nicely. Um, here we see the bottom of the um, plexiglass roadway which I had um, screwed on um, using um, bolts. This is a combination drill and tap. Here's a larger version of the same thing. You can see drill tip here, which drills into the wood. And then this cuts the tap into the wood or the plastic or the metal then you back it out you turn it up the other you reverse and it will take it out leaving a hole that has been tapped inside so you tend to run this at a slower speed and then after it goes in slowly you want to stop it and reverse it and back it out slowly and that way you get a really great perfect Tap. Different size taps, 420, 
which is a pretty standard size bolt, often used in photography, tripods, things like that. And this, particularly for plastic, uh, makes it easy to tap into plastic because um, it's easy to drill and tap at the same time, which is what I did um, in making my um, bridge. So here I'm going to be putting on some uh, cross struts on the bottom of the roadway. And um, to be honest, these are primarily cosmetic. I'm using a center punch, which is a spring-loaded punch, which will make a little dent in the plastic that will guide my drill later so I can get it exactly right. These struts are not really um, giving any support, they're just meant to look nice. And they required um, bolts that were just a little too long than the ones I had, and rather than wait to find shorter ones, I just ground down the um, dozen or so bolts that we needed. Um, and I didn't want them to stick up into the roadway, so um, they had to be shorter than the ones I had, and I just made them shorter. So here we are putting on the cosmetic cross pieces, which I felt were necessary because otherwise the track looked like it would be suspended in midair just on the cold air plexi. And this gave a little bit more of a sense of these um, uh, being on a, a bridge. Um, and I flipped it over. Um, this is the correct orientation. The side rails. Um, which will um, take the supports of the bridge on both sides. I'm going back to um, looking at this and showing what the proposed scale of the bridge will be. And I'm playing around with various pieces to see what looks nice, really. The, um, as long as there's triangles, the bridge will probably be self-supporting. Um, I am again playing with various shapes of trying to get a, uh, um, a pattern that looks nice. The circular ones aren't really stronger, they just look nice and I like them. There's a mix of old and new parts here. I kind of mixed them together in the hope that rather than have one section it was all new and one section old old I'd mix them together but the more I look at it the less happy I am about that so I've decided to try and basically paint over or weather the new stuff to give it a little bit more age and maybe that will help it to be unified so that's what I'm gonna do right now I'm gonna get some washes and paints and um, see what happens so I refilmed myself painting it, but unfortunately I lost that section and it came out pretty well. I used um, just acrylic paint, uh, different colors, a little bit of rust, a little bit of black for weathering, and went over very quickly and roughly. I decided to test the track to make sure that there was plenty of clearance for the struts of the bridge on the side, that nothing was going to be um, touching the train as it moved through. And now I begin to um, assemble um, the pieces. And again, I'm kind of going by eye. I'm not exactly following the drawing that I had. I'm kind of playing around with it, testing, trying out different um, pieces. Um, here I am experimenting with um, the uprights and uh, um, just seeing what looks well and what works in some senses uh, as a structure. Again, um, the main engineering necessity is to keep a lot of triangles because that's where the support comes from. Um, I put in the curved pieces simply to kind of take the edge off the sharp triangles. So my design is a combination of triangles plus the curves and the arcs to soften it a bit. 
And here's a little bit of a shot showing my original concept of the top being a little bit um, streamlined on top of the very angular triangles. And I think that combination works pretty well. Um, I've assembled one side of it now. And so it's a matter of replicating the pattern on the other side and hoping that I have enough uh, pieces to do that. After I've assembled both sides of the bridge, I want to bridge the pieces, the two sides, with um, a little bit of spacers in between, and they don't really exist, so I bent them out of um, medium-sized pieces that I had. And I bent them by hand, and um, I put them in between the two sides, and as I did that, it really did add to the rigidity of the piece, um, making it much, much stronger. And the entire um, bridge at the end was self-supporting. It easily spanned the eight feet, very rigid, yet still very lightweight. And um, you can see the final results looks quite beautiful. Um, all made with um, a few toy erector set pieces. <laughs> 